my name is Lisa. I am with Cone, and we have been kind of running this social media, our technology and social media pavilion for the past couple of years now. Um, I feel like a lot of you have been sitting through some sessions, so you kind of get the gist. We do quick 20, 15 to 20 minute sessions, kind of give you a little um, insight in, into what's going on in the world of social media and a variety of topics. And if you have additional questions, you can always find one of us in a t-shirt to ask about your own personal objectives or company objectives or whatever you need. So um, this session is about tailoring your social media marketing. Um, and it's kind of looking at two different case studies. Uh, I know most retailers, most shopping centers, uh, their primary goals are to drive traffic and to drive sales, which is what everybody is trying to do. However, what we're going to look at is that beyond that, there are ways to target your customers so that you're building a relationship with them and then in turn turns them into some kind of a brand ambassador or a loyal customer. So we're really going to look at um, two different uh, strategies, one based on kind of a value-oriented retailer and one based on a luxury retailer. So as I just said, not all brands are created equal, so your social media strategy should not be the same. Um, we're beyond the time period where you just open up a Facebook page, open up a Twitter account, and start posting generically to it kind of have to think through it pretty strategically and determine who you're talking to and how you're going to best reach them. Um, it's beyond just demographics. You know, I was talking to a few different shopping center developers recently. You know, one has just gigantic malls that are really destinations for tra people traveling or visiting or, you know, it's more of an experiential versus another sh shopping center that's a little bit smaller and more of a community focused. Uh, center. So the two of those places should not be doing the same strategy in their social media. Um, that's what you really need to think through. Who your customers are and what it is that they're expecting from their social media experience. So we're going to go through a tale of two brands, luxury versus value. And the first one we're going to take a look at is Louis Vuitton. Now for me, I honestly was wondering why a brand like a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci or Chanel would be on Facebook or Twitter or any of these places because I don't necessarily see their clientele trolling Facebook and you know following their brand. However, Louis Vuitton has done a fabulous job with their account. Um, they really obviously understand who they are and they're going after kind of that idea of having that aspirational lifestyle. It becomes more of an experience. They really target that sophistication, that you know, the want or the desire to achieve this kind of status. So they're not posting about their products. You very rarely find Louis Vuitton saying anything about a new handbag coming out or new products coming out, outside of maybe more achievable things such as a perfume or sunglasses. Um, but what they use their page for is to create that emotional connection, that aspirational kind of feeling so that eventually down the road, perhaps somebody might have the means to come back and they've already established this kind of loyalty with this brand. Uh, oh, whoops, wrong way. There we go. Um, so kind of taking a look at what they've done with their page, as you can see, their status updates are really about art, culture, experience, travel. They've talked about opening up a new theater in you know, Paris. Um, they're not talking about their products. They associate with the kind of that celebrity lifestyle. They do profiles on celebrities such as Angelina Jolie or whoever is kind of representing their brand at that point in time. Again, taking you through a trip to Cambodia and kind of letting you tap into that experience on your own. And then they did do a little bit of a product uh, push where they're talking about um, uh, their new cinema and some of the designs that are associated with that. So they really focus more on experience, lifestyle, and kind of banking on the fact that they have a really long storied history. Um, timeline is fabulous for this kind of a brand because they have such a long history. They can go in and start talking about the fact that, you know, they were founded in the 1800s and the evolution of their brand. It becomes almost a history of the company. It's like a fine wine. People may not be able to drink it all the time, but it's interesting that for them to actually go in and learn about it. So it's more about learning about the brand and establishing that connection with them. So then if you move on to value, we're looking at Target, and they have obviously a much different strategy than a Louis Vuitton would. Um, they're going for practical solutions, but for a customer that might have those high aspirations still. Instead of providing a lifestyle or an experience, they're providing added value and benefits to their customers. 
target customer is looking for ways to basically achieve the crate and barrel lifestyle but at a much lower cost. Um, so what they're doing is they're providing a lot of tips, tr trends, tricks on how you can decorate your home or how you can dress yourself to look like a celebrity at a much cheaper cost. They provide a lot of coupons, a lot of discounts. Um, they provide services such as a group giving or a group gifting, which is kind of a new concept. Is anybody familiar with Wrap? It's a new um, application where you can download it. It tells you when somebody's birthday is. And you basically can go in with a whole bunch of other people to build up a $100 gift card and then you send it off to the person. So Target does something similar where you can kind of set up an account, let's say it's for a wedding, and people can go in and add 10, 15, 20 dollars and it ends up building up into this bigger group gift that they, they deliver off to the person. So again, providing practical solutions um, for kind of the everyday person. They also, as opposed to Louis Vuitton, who has a very targeted social media plan where they pretty much focus all their efforts on Facebook. Facebook is very visual, it tells their history, it allows them to put those applications and that branding in there. Um, a lot of the other social media networks don't necessarily have all those benefits. Target, however, is across the board. They're on everything. They're pretty much trying to figure out how they can reach every single one of their possible customers on any avenue possible. So they're on Twitter, they're on Pinterest, they're on Facebook, they're on YouTube, they're on you know, pretty much every social channel, Google Plus, they're on everything that they can think of and they're targeting their messages based on the different areas that they are. So if you look at how they're using Pinterest, they're using it to show people how to create that celebrity wardrobe or that celebrity home with Target products. Um, they've got applications with the weekly ads. So they're really across the board taking advantage of every single network that's out there. And that's pretty much it. So it's just mostly thinking about who your customer is and it's not just about pushing your product. It's really figuring out how you're going to get them to be more engaged with your brand and whether that's providing benefits or solutions or lifestyles or experiences. Um, it's mostly just about thinking through those, those strategies. Questions? Anybody? So even below the targets, what are you seeing in terms of trends in uh, local community centers, you know, that aren't anchored by targets or, um, but you know, may have six or seven tenants on the on the in the area, and how how are they using? Uh, yeah. So are you are these shopping centers that kind of do they have a name recognition to them, or are they like strip centers that okay? So they're just smaller shopping centers that are in a smaller community. Honestly, when they're community centers, I would say that Facebook is probably the number one platform to utilize because people, I'm from a very small community, I'm from a town of 8,000 people originally, and pretty much everybody knows everybody's business all the time. <laughs> so we follow like the local newspapers, we follow a lot of the local restaurants. It's very targeted to that community, it's a lot of events, it's a lot of added values. Um, I'm working with the shopping center now that's a little bit smaller, and we do a lot of like weekly giveaways, whether it's just $5 here, $10 there. Um, and that has been huge in building our community. When we first launched the page a couple months ago, we probably started with about 30 fans that somehow found us. We didn't do a whole lot of promotion on it, but uh, we created this application that we call What Do You Think Weekly? Because we wanted to teach our consumers who were not, I would say, socially savvy or social media savvy. We wanted to teach them how to engage with Facebook better while providing them with a little added value. So we created an application that's called um, What Do You Think Weekly? And we built it almost to mimic the Facebook wall. We built it within an application because you can't run contests on the Facebook wall. And what we do is each week we ask a new question. So, um, you know, what is your favorite spring shoe style? comment below and be entered to win a $10 gift card to uh, DSW. And what we started finding is that people were learning how to engage them with the page and the fans were building up and then they were also going to the wall and starting to engage with us there. So little by little we started to train them on how to use it and when to comment and they started to build kind of that personal relationship with the shopping center uh, versus it just being an entity or a building. So. In a community, I think you really, a small community, you really have to tap into who they are, what their interests are, what their lifestyle is, and figure out how to then capture that on the social media platform.